Alright guys, I think this is the start of the video a lot of you have been waiting for on this uh, 85300 CD with 56,000 miles on it. I'm going to start going through the suspension and at first glance uh, it's really clean under here. Um, this is my just initial inspection. Yeah, I'm going to want to, that bushing is cracked apart there. I couldn't tell on the test drive, of course, but that's, it's time to change that. See where it's split there? So I'm going to change lower control arm bushings. Wow, the ball joints are still intact. Um, but I'm going to have it off to change this bushing, so I'm, I'm going to change all of this anyway. All the boots are still intact on the control arms. That's... Oh wow, they're still tight too. I mean, 56,000 miles, there's not much wear on any of this. So, uh, you know, it looks like, that looks like a new, that's a new bolt right there. So at some point, somebody did, redid the bushings in the uh, idler arm. Interesting. So that's already been done. That's a brand new bolt on top and bottom. Um, oh yeah, I can see this ball joint's cracked. It's right there. It's got a little piece of it missing. But again, I'm going to change all that. Oh man, look. They already put new Bilstein shocks up here. I wonder if they put them in the back. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So it's already got a set of new shocks on it. Cool. I was not expecting that. The uh, Just looking at the upper boot up here. It's not ripped on the upper control arm. Oh, this one's in good shape too, so I need to inspect those because with 56,000 miles, I bet you those upper control arms are in fantastic shape. Let me go see if, yeah, the brake control rod, that, boot, that cover's not all ripped up. That looks nice. Wow, it looks really nice under here. Arizona car, 56,000 miles. Um, I do know I need new exhaust hangers. Look at that gnarly thing. It's like hanging on for dear life. Oh, wow. Look, new Bilstein shocks in the rear. Bam. That's always a nice treat when you see uh, someone's already changed the shocks. That's cool. So we don't need to order a set of new shocks. They've already been replaced. Boots look in good condition. Let's check this guy over here. Oh yeah, axle boots are in. Oh yeah, those are in outstanding condition, nice. Somebody already changed that brake line too. That, that's definitely a new brake line. So these people were definitely maintaining the car. Um, with 56,000 miles, I don't know why you would change the brake lines, but I, I guess it probably sat for years, and then they got it back out to drive around and have fun, and so they put some new brake lines on there. I bet that's exactly what happened. They wanted to, they serviced it before they started driving it again. Let's see what this one looks like up here. Wow, that one looks good too. The uh, the sheath around the uh, brake pad wear sensors, it's not all, it's usually cracked and corroded. And, you know, so it's usually cracked and falling apart. And this one's still all in one piece. That's really cool. So I'm going to pop off the, uh, one of these wheels, well, or both of these wheels, and take a look at the, uh, just looking at the gasket here. It's not leaking around the oil pan gasket. It's pretty clean up in there. I'm going to pop off this, uh, these wheels and take a look at the, uh, look at the brakes. See if they're still, uh, still in good shape. All right, so I've got the wheels off and first thing I'm checking Wow, the rotors do not even have a lip on them. Wow, look how thick they are. These rotors aren't even worn. There's no grooving in them. 
But look at that. So this car spent its whole life in Yuma, Arizona, which if you guys don't know, that's the middle of the desert and it doesn't rain ever. Um, that caliper does not have any rust on it. I've never seen one of these cars where the caliper has not got rust on it. That's crazy. Oh, it's got a full set of, uh, sorry. It's got a full set of pads. There we go. You can see the pad there and there. It's got a fresh set, full set of brake pads on there. The sensors aren't all ripped up. That's crazy. Let's take a look at this one. Wow. Pads are, it's basically a brand new set of pads. Not brand new, they're, they're obviously old, but, and this rotor has absolutely no, no lip on it. Normally they have lips on them, you need to change them, and they're all, they're super thin and worn out, but 56,000 miles, I guess your rotors are fine, right? Um, look at this, this is the original Bendix, because see it has the, the cotter pins, ATE doesn't have the cotter pins, Bendix does. And this has, yeah, this has Bendix on it. So those look fantastic. Just looking at the lines up here and the grommets. All this looks fantastic. Upper control arm boot. Oh yeah, it's good shape. Sweet, I can't wait to take this one apart. And Oh, there we go. So I'm changing tie rods, obviously. There you go, you can see where the boot has ripped on this one. It's still strong though. And this one, yep, this one's, it's interesting, the rift on the outside, but not on the inside. Uh, the exhaust is outstanding. Normally this is way more rusted on these cars. This just has like minor surface rust on it. Like I said, it's in the desert, so. Yeah, that looks outstanding under here. You can see all the dust on the drive shaft from the uh, being out in the desert. It's dusty as hell out there. Yeah, it looks fantastic under here. So, all right, I'm going to start taking apart the front end, replacing bearings, tie rods, uh, engine mounts, engine shocks, center link, steering shock, ball joints. We're going to do the works on this car because this car is super nice. Well, let's look at this uh, oil cooler line. Oh, that's great. Not a drop of oil on the oil cooler line. Fantastic. Anyway, enjoy the uh, video. I'm going to get started on this, you guys. Just one more quick thing I wanted to point out. I showed the lower control arm bushing on the other side. Uh, on the passenger side, see see the bushing here? That one's in excellent condition. However, this one, you can see it sort of started to squish, it looks like, a little bit. And yeah, so I'm definitely replacing these. But over here, you can see this one. This one's pretty beat up. That's all cracked and rotted. But uh, it's weird how that one looks perfect. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on this. Anyway, let's start by removing these uh, uh, dust boots. I just kind of go around it slowly and knock it off with a uh, knock it off with a flathead screwdriver. Don't do it too hard; it'll bust a hole in it. Okay. They have obviously re-greased these wheel bearings at some point. That's not the original Mercedes goop you're used to seeing in there. It's like some blue stuff, and that's fresh. Yeah, that's really fresh grease in excellent condition. Man, these guys really took care of this car. Let's go uh, check the other side. Normally, it's super old grease you find in there, and... Uh, and the folks haven't really taken care of the vehicles and greased the wheel bearings. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, that one came off easy. Oh yeah, same with this side. 
a bunch of fresh grease in there. Let's go ahead and start taking this stuff apart. I always feel like I'm like on an archaeological dig when I first disassemble one of these cars. Oh, the little radio uh, interference. This little copper piece Mercedes sticks on the end of the spindle to help with radio interference and it was just broken off in the spindle. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the hubs are held on with a there's an Allen key. You, you undo it and then you can unscrew this nut on the end. Go and wipe this one off. Now here you can see the radio interference. Uh, this one's in good shape. Good shape meaning uh, it has the, there you go, there's a the little tip that plugs into the spindle right there and that's what contacts the cover over the bearings. Just take those out. Sometimes you can sneak around up here to get this one. Let's see here. I might need to get an extension. There we go. All right. Got that one off. Sneak around here to get the top one. Got to get in there just right. Come on. There we go. All right, those are caliper bolts. We'll just set these over here. These are the things I use here to hang up my calipers. I just hang them from the, uh, the sway bar, and it's just a thick gauge uh, wire. So that way I can take off the caliper like that and then I can put this thick gauge wire right through the mounting hole and I can put it up there around the sway bar. I have the car too high in the air right now. I'll need to lower it just a little bit to do that. So I put that thick gauge wire through there and then I come around the sway bar. Hopefully you guys can see that. Here we go. Once you get it around the sway bar, then you can just twist the wire together. It's still a little high. I have to stand up on my tiptoes almost. But there you go. You just twist those wires together and it will just hang there until you're done with the front suspension job. So the calipers pull straight off. Like I said, it's normally not that easy. Sometimes you got to get a pry bar in there or remove the... Uh, brake pads because it won't clear the lip but these uh these just came off very smooth like butter so it doesn't put stress on any of the wires everything just just hangs there and can be suspended look at those brake pads the brand new brake pads there's barely any use on those once you have the calipers off these will unscrew and notice i'm doing that by hand um, that is made where a socket does not go on it uh, because Mercedes doesn't want you to over tighten that. They just want you to get it snug to take the play. See, you can hear play in the bearings right now. So they, their procedures, you snug that up. There's a little bit of play. You snug it up till there's no more play. You don't crank it down or the bearings won't spin. See how smooth that spins? Well, if I crank it down, I can't crank it down hard enough. You guys get, get my point. If you crank it down with a wrench or, or whatever, it's going to uh, make it where your bearings can't spin and it creates unnecessary friction. And those bearings need to operate, so you just hand tighten it. Anyway, this is the little uh, nut that Mercedes uses. It is, uh, you see, there's nothing to put a wrench on. It's made to be turned by hand, and then there's the set screw right there. So once you have that off, I'm just going to set this on my workbench. Once you have that off, I like to put two thumbs right on the end of the spindle. That holds the bearing in, so when you pull off the uh, uh, rotor, your bearing won't fall out. <laughs> I almost dropped it. So there we go. There is, there's your outer bearing and your inner bearing. There's actually a seal you can see the inner bearing, right? That's it, right there. And then this is a seal. See all the dust and dirt on that seal? That, that seal keeps it out of the bearing. Of course, I'm gonna change all those seals. So let me set this down, and we'll go over to the other side. And those rotors are great. No, 
I'm not even going to replace those rotors. They're in outstanding condition. It's rare that I see rotors in outstanding condition like that on these old cars. Normally, I replace them, but these are great. They don't even look like they've been used. In fact, it looks like they were replaced in, may, in the new when the new pads were put in there, and then maybe driven like a couple of thousand miles, and that's it. All right. So again, I put two thumbs there because sometimes this is hard to get off. It's kind of stuck on there. Yeah, like this one, perfect example. So you don't want anything to come flying off. Right, there we go. And again, you got the seal on the back, and there's your bearing on the front. And of course, that's the spindle. All right, so we're going to set all that down. And now that all that's off, this is when you can start disassembling the suspension. First thing you gotta do is take off the dust shield. So the dust shield has three little, I think they're like number four, I forget what they call them in metric, uh, Allen bolts in there. So let me get the, the Allen key. All right, so I got the right size Allen key. It's just a small one. And we're just gonna run those out of there so this dust shield will come off. And then we can access the uh, control arm and ball joint behind there. So those guys come off. And there's your dust shield. And it's crazy. This has never seen any rain. Uh, sometimes they're a little rusted and a little pitted. This just has dust on it. So this is going to clean up and look brand new when I throw it in the parts washer. This is my first Arizona car. and It's really incredible. You always hear stories about Arizona cars and let's clean this off the spindle about them being the best because there's no rain and like seriously there's no rust or corrosion anywhere but it's dusty as hell because there was never any moisture so that looks great we're going to go ahead and set that down and next i'll start on the uh tie rods so you'll see i got to take one loose there, one loose there, and then here's the center link. Yeah, we're going to replace that floppy center link. That's that bolt there, and here, and then here's the other tie rod on the other side. Once those are out, I can I can pivot the control arm and get access to the uh, to take the control arm and ball joint apart. All right, we're going to go ahead and start undoing all of the tie rod bolts. And these things are not torqued on with a crazy amount of torque. Um, I think they're like 30 or 35 foot-pounds. Um, and you know if an amateur mechanic has worked on your car, is uh, everything will be over-torqued. Um, everything will be way too tight. Um, these don't actually go on there very tight. Look at that. They're only at like 30, 35 foot pounds. Same for old American muscle cars and whatnot. And a lot of guys just want to get in here and crank these down because it's my steering components and these need to be super tight, but they don't. Um, there's a certain torque that goes with uh, the size bolt. And these are, I don't know, if, uh, those are, took a 17 millimeter nut, so whatever size whatever size bolt that is, and it's not very big, um, but there's a bolt torque that goes with every size uh, material and bolt size. So grade 8 for hardened steel is going to take you know, more torque than uh, grade 5, etc. And uh, I'm pretty sure Mercedes uses a lot of grade 8 stuff. Alright, so we've got all those off, then I just need to get my uh, ball joint breaker to break those loose. And that guy looks like this. Um, it's this contraption uh, that fits around. But anyway, you put it around the boot. There you go. That's a good one to, for demonstration purposes. All right, there you go. You guys can probably see better there. Um, I just put the ball joint 
breaker right there. It goes around the boot. And I put a little cheater piece of aluminum here so I don't have to turn it as much. And it just breaks it loose. There you go. It's that quick. Um, and then your ball joint is popped out. So I need to do that on, on the rest of the underside of the car. You guys probably don't want to watch all that. I'm just going to pop them all loose. And then I'll, uh, I'll come back to the recording. Okay, I, I backed that car up a little bit and lowered this car down so you guys could see. And what's up, Jefferson? How are you? That's Thomas over there, and that's Jefferson right there. <laughs> what are you guys doing? So anyway, I uh, got all the um, everything removed underneath here. And you can see, there's the tie rods, the center link, uh, the steering shock, there's the other tie rod. But here we can turn the spindle around and easily access the ball joint. And, man, that ball joint is in good condition. Um, I'm going to replace it anyway because it's 40 years old and I've got to do that one. So might as well do both. And plus, there's that... Uh, there's the sign of the bushing there that's, that's cracking and rotted and gross, so I'm going to change all that. So anyway, better get to it. Alright guys, today I'm starting on uh, disassembly of the 300CD um, hub and spindle. And uh, right now I've got the spring compressor um, in place to compress this spring a little bit. And so I can take off the ball joint, upper and lower, and got a ton of parts in. Um, went with all limb forder suspension, um, tons of stuff in here. Got a couple of, got a couple of Phoebe parts. What is that part? Oh, that's uh, inner, uh, inner lower control arm bushing. Yeah, limb forder didn't make those. I go with limb forder anytime I can. They, they make really good stuff. But anyway, a whole box of parts there and parts here. And anyway, there's tons of stuff. So I'm going to get started on uh, this. Going to go ahead and pop off that spindle. All right. So we have the spring out. You can see it there on the spring compressor. And I just greased up the uh, ball joint separator tool so it wouldn't rip that boot. There's the tool right there. And so now we're ready to take out the hub or, or spindle and lower ball joint and we'll move the brake control rod, uh, control rod bushing back there and right here we'll replace these bushings, take all this off and clean it up. Tons of just dust from Arizona desert on there. And then uh, take out the lower control arm. I'll mark the spot so it stays in alignment and makes it easier for the alignment shop. And then we'll change these rotted out bushings right in there. All right, so let's get this nasty, uh, nasty stuff off of here. And these shocks are actually new Bilsteins, so I'm gonna clean those up put them back on here you can see that's a uh, new Bilstein sticker with the new part number on it so these shocks are fine we'll just take take these guys off and clean them up real good because there's nothing wrong with them but this ball joint so I noticed the boot is actually not ripped on this side it is on the other um, I went ahead and loosened that off camera, but, uh, see it's kind of, there's not much, uh, resistance. Um, it's kind of floppy. Normally with a fresh ball joint, it'll stay in place. So it does have some wear on it. So let's get the ball joint, uh, press on here. There we go. I normally don't do it this high, but I wanted to record it. Um, so I'll probably have to hold the spindle so it doesn't fall and hit the fall and hit the on here. 
I'm just going to hold the spindle because it's going to fall. Oh, there we go. All right. So, there we go. Like I said, that ball joint wasn't broken. The boot wasn't broken, but you can see it definitely needs to be replaced. There's a lot of wear on there. Um, so let's go ahead and get some new ball joints pressed into here. Get this cleaned up and painted. Actually, before we do that, I want to go ahead and take this spring perch off because we're going to uh, we're going to clean this up. These are just 13 millimeters. Man, that Loctite's in there good. All right, let's come back to that one. The Germans are not shy with their Loctite. Let me grab my hand, hand wrench or 3H drive here. We'll get that off of here. Yeah, they got the lock tight all over that one for sure. Uh, control rod bushing. You can see how it started to deteriorate. And uh, so I'm going to take this out of here. And we're going to put a fresh one in there. You can see there's a nut there on the bottom. And then a uh, bolt head right there. Alright, these front control rod bushings are on there pretty good. So I'm going to get the impact on here. It's a 19 on the bottom and a 19 on the top, and this will just spin it off. There we go. This impact always makes quick work of anything. There we go. Now, that bolt is in excellent condition. Let's pick that guy out of here. So on the top, there's these metal like pucks and nothing wrong with these these are good just clean up the parts washer get some of this dirt and grime off of here but there around it is your bushing and that is what has deteriorated on this one that's just falling apart so on the bottom you also have a bushing with the metal puck in it and uh there you go so I'm going to throw some new bushings in there, but those bushings are what support the front of the uh, control rod that goes back to the control rod bushing here. Uh, so I'm going to clean these up real good, and we'll put some more. Uh, we'll put some new new bushings in the front there. Now I want to mark these uh, where the alignment is. And I'll un undo the um, lower control arm bolt and we'll take these control arms out. So before I take this lower control arm out, I'm going to go ahead and remove the brake control rod bushing or the control rod bushing, whatever you want to refer to it as. And there are, I think these are 13 or 10, three bolts back here. So let me go ahead and get after that. Okay, so I got the three bolts out of the control rod bushing, and that actually um, pulls forward out here. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and unbolt the lower control arm. Okay, just so it's easier to uh, uh, get it um, somewhat aligned when you put things back together, I like to get a, a white paint pen. I'll mark down here at the bottom and up here at the top. And I'll just get those somewhat aligned in a similar position when I put things back together. And then I'll do it around here on the back too. It's so dirty back here. But come on. I'll just mark it somewhere there and somewhere right in there. And then uh, once I clean everything off, I'll have to scribe it. But uh, that'll get me close. All right, I got the ginormous uh, lower control arm bolt out. And this being an Arizona car, um, there's no rust anywhere. You can actually see the cadmium plating is still on the bolt over here. 
So I'm going to clean that up and, and definitely reuse that. It's in excellent condition. Um, so here we go. Let's pull this out. I'm going to try this one-handed. Actually, I'm going to put you on the stand right here. And let's pull this guy out of here. There we go. And then the brake control rod comes right out of there like that. All right. So, boom. There we go. We got everything removed, so I'm going to do some cleanup up here, make it look pretty. And there's the parts. Uh, there's the control rod bushing, lower control arm shock, shock perch, and the spindle. Now the upper control arm, that'll come out um, next. And first we'll detach it right here from the sway bar. And then I'll go up here and there's a bolt that runs through the engine compartment and through here I'll undo that. So here's the old control rod bushing and I noticed you know the boot is not ripped, it's still intact and there's still some grease up in there. So I was just seeing the condition of this and uh, it still feels good. I bet there were tens of tens of thousands of miles left on this one. Um, it is a little easy to move but uh, I think this one is still in decent shape. But of course we're changing it anyway, it's 40 years old. Why not? Just shows the quality of uh, the quality of these cars. So I'm about to remove the bushings uh, from the lower control arm from the driver's side, but I wanted to show you something about. Here's the passenger side bushing, and see that little nub right there and right there. That's the how the bushings are oriented to the control arm. You can see they're sticking straight. Those nubs are facing uh, the passenger side. Now, on the driver's side, I think the bushings have rotated a little bit because you can see, see how the nubs are actually down here and right there. So that bushing has rotated a little, but you can see it's, it's dry rotted and ready to come out. But the replacement bushing, they also include those nubs. So when I reinstall these, I need to make sure I orient it where that nub is actually facing out uh, the driver's side wheel well like that. Um, that's important to install them that way. Now to to put the uh, let me put that bushing back in there. To get the bushings out, uh, that can be tricky unless you have an air hammer and this thing. makes quick work of it. So let's go ahead and get those out of there. Alright, so before we attempt to get these bushings out with the uh, air hammer, I want to take a chisel and knock in the edges of this retainer. That, <coughs> that is a steel, steel tube that goes through the middle of the bushing. See, when you get a new one, it's not uh, it doesn't have a flange on that side, so you can insert it through the bushing. But to remove the old ones, you want to get a little chisel and knock it, knock it in on the edges around here, so then the bushing can slide back out. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, guys, let me see if I can elegantly do this on uh, on camera. Uh, I just have a chisel here, and I'm just going to tap in. The sides of that. This this takes a little while. Just got to slowly work around the edges. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. You can see see right here where I'm just here's what it did look like. See there's a, a bevel around there or a flange that holds the bushing in and I'm just knocking in the flange so the bushing can then slide over the end. So here's the old bushing, and I mean it's not terrible, but it's uh, it's deformed. See, so it's good that we got that old old thing out of there. Oh, 
All right. Let's raise this camera up here. So this is how the bushing works. See, it goes together like that and fits inside the control arm. All right, guys, here we are at the Clean-O-Matic 9000. Just kidding, it's, it's not called that. But look at this dirty old uh, spindle here, or a uh, hub, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy cleaned up real good. And uh, I already cleaned the, uh, the lower control arm. And uh, I haven't even repainted that. I just cleaned it. Look at how nice that came out. And uh, there's no rust or damage. Look how shiny it is in there. Normally these cars, you know, water, a little bit of water. Oh, there's a little spot that's, that's rough right there. So I'll sand that down. But it uh, looks really good in there. So I'm going to go ahead and sand that down, get these cleaned up and, uh, and painted. And I'm going to work on the uh, spindle now. Go ahead and get this thing cleaned up real good. And then we'll knock out the ball joint on this thing and press in a new ball joint and get everything back on the car. So I'm just cleaning up the uh, spindle after having it in the parts washer. And I was wondering why this 40 year old boot wasn't ripped. And actually on this side of the car, it has a well, you can't see around behind there, but I can. It says uh, melee, or melee, however you say that. So somebody put a ball joint in there. However, it's not very tight. Shows a lot of wear, so I'm definitely knocking that one out and putting a limb forder in there. Uh, anyway, just wanted to show that. So before you can press a new ball joint in with the tool that I have, um, I'm sure you guys have seen the tool in some other videos. Uh, you have to remove the uh, little tie rod uh, arm here or it gets in the way. I'm going to go ahead and spin this guy off of here. It's just a 19 millimeter. Wow, look at the condition of that bolt. That is very, very nice. Still cadmium plated. Alright, pull that guy off of here. Then we'll go ahead and knock out this ball joint and press in the new one. And you guys have seen this several times, but I like to get it in the press where the bottom part right here is actually on the table. So when I'm whacking this ball joint, um, not all the, the grip is required by the vise, uh, the tabletop. Uh, provides resistance. Uh, so you need a five pound sledge to do this. Five pound sledge. And let me just make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. There you go. You just set this on top of the uh, ball joint. All it is is a little metal slug. And, and then you gotta bang that out. I move my hand when I do it because if it presses through all of a sudden it'll catch your hand and mash it into the uh, spindle. It's coming out slowly but surely. Almost. loose it is. It only has a few thousand miles on it. So I'm going to throw that in the trash, put a nice limb porter in here. Let's go ahead and inspect the bore. Yeah, it looks really good in there. Very nice. These are going to get sanded down and painted. It's just a little bit of surface rust on the spindle from the parts washer. So I'm going to go ahead and press that ball joint in then clean this up and we'll paint it real nice. Let's go ahead and go into our box of goodies. All of these parts are going on the car and that looks like a ball joint box right there.
yeah, there's our ball joint. So we'll go over here to the press. Ignore that car, you didn't see that, but that's coming soon. 84, 300 CD coupe with uh, blue real leather interior with 58,000 miles. Anyway, you guys didn't see that car because that's the uh, secret that I'm gonna do next. Got a cool video series coming. Um, so, you guys have seen this before. This is the ball joint uh, tool, and I really like this. It's different than any other tool I've used. Um, there's a nice limb porter ball joint. See how stiff that is? You can't move it at all. That's what uh, that's what they should be like. So you just set that down in there, and this has a slotted area that fits around the spindle, and then underneath it, it has a puck. Let's see if you guys can see that. So, this just goes, we first center the, uh, center the spindle over the little puck here on the bottom, and then we put the ball joint tool over the top, and down on top of the ball joint, and it goes around the boot, that way it doesn't tear the boot or mess anything up. And then we'll just go ahead and... Crank that down. Let me zoom out so you can see that. That's what we're doing there. And I have a handle right here. That's the pumping sound. And we're just going to press that ball joint in there. It takes a tremendous amount of force. This is a 20 ton shock press. Alright, it's going in there straight and smooth. Just do a little bit at a time until it bottoms out. Right there is where I'm watching. Alright, that feels bottomed out. Let's take a look. Take the tool off. And set that there. And perfect. See how the ball joint is perfectly flush along the bottom and perfectly seated where it's supposed to be. So that's good. So now we're going to go get this thing painted and put it back on the car. Okay, I've got all the front end uh, back in from paint. This time I used a, a low gloss. Normally I use a semi gloss. Um, I think low gloss was closer to the factory Mercedes. Um, yeah, I got to push in the bushings next. Uh, I've got the new ball joint in here. Um, this did come out very nice. The, the low gloss finish, finish is, it's not as fancy as that semi gloss stuff, but uh, came out pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put the control rod bushing. Um, go ahead and thread that into here. And I've always put a little bit of uh, uh, annexes on here, just in case, you know. Um, and we'll just go ahead and thread this guy back on here. I think it was somewhere in the vicinity of like three threads showing. So now I'm going to go, uh, let's see, push in. Um, these new bushings. Now remember what I showed you before about the tabs They have to be oriented the correct direction. So we'll make sure we do that when we push these in on the press Sorry guys, I forgot to hit record um, All I did was line up the bushing and I'm just pushing it in here Just making sure it goes in straight And uh, sorry about that, I forgot to push record once I started. Alright guys, so after you get your bushings in, and you make sure the, uh, the tabs are aligned correctly with the control arm. See, these are pointing the same, the same direction. 
sits like that in the car and the tabs point out of the wheel well. Next thing you got to do is put in the, um, the center piece. So um, the sleeve that goes in the middle. I push the sleeve through and see how it's beveled there or chamfered so that bushing can't come out on this side but you don't have, you got to push it through there so there's no chamfer on that side. So you ask how do you get the you know the beveled edge there. Well you take a one of your lug nuts and see it has a radius on the lug nut and you actually put that in the side that already has the chamfered radius or bevel. I'm not sure if I'm using the right words. Alright, we'll get that on there. Make sure you guys can see this. Alright, then you take another lug nut and you put it there on top. Then you take your hammer. One more whack. And there we go. And you guys can see it is now chamfered the edge. All right, now the final thing, we've got to put our tie rod arm, uh, this is where the tie rod connects to on the uh, spindle. And uh, make sure you put Loctite, that's the blue Loctite on these bolts. And then you just tighten them back up. And this is, uh, this Ingersoll ran is super powerful, so you want 60 or 80 foot-pounds you just barely tap it this thing will snap bolts right in half if you're not careful anyway you get that back on there and here we go so we have our painted and new ball joint spindle we have the bushings, new bushings in our lower control arm. And I'm going to grab the bushings here for the front uh, control rod where that goes through. Got that painted, got that painted. And here is our new control rod bushing. So it's time to start putting these back in the car. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and take off the upper control arm and. Uh, and put that back on there. But I guess in the meantime, we can go ahead and reinstall this. First. Okay, there we go. Stick that in there. And then we'll go ahead, slip it into our control arm. And there we go. Now we put our control arm up there. Now I can already see that the brake control rod is a little too long, but it's probably just because it's not all the way flush up in there. Let's see. If I mount it flush, eh, still think it's a little too long. Let me tighten that down a little bit. We can adjust it manually later. All right. Throw that in there. Now let's grab our bolt. See if we can get the holes lined up for the control arm. There we go. All right. So, brake or uh, the control rod bushings in there. Always call it the brake control rod. I don't think that's the correct name, but I read that somewhere and it's always stuck with me. I think it's just the control rod bushing. Uh, um, I read somewhere brake control rod bushing, so I've always called it that. But. Um, Anyway, so I just got that started, and you can see I think it's a little bit long, so I want to make an adjustment uh, for that to pull it back in a little bit. Um, and it might be a little long too because it's actually not all the way back in there and bolted in. Um, but I've got the bolt started here, and you can see it comes to the other side. And remember the little white mark that I put there? Let me line the, um, the washer up with that white mark. There is my white mark. So what that tells me is that should be rotated. That should be rotated downwards a little bit. 
So let me get my wrench. Want. There we go. That's actually my top mark up there. There we go. And now let's pull the control arm a little bit to get it. There we go. There we go. My mark here and my little mark there. Those are lined up perfect. So this control arm is in the same it's in the same place uh, as it was when I took it out. Now Phoebe also supplied us with a new bolt, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. Nice new blue bolt here. Just put on some new hardware. All right, so temporarily, I'll just leave that loose. I wanna get uh, a little load on it before I tighten things down. And now I wanna address uh, putting in, bolting in the back of the brake, I'm sorry, the back of the control rod bushing. This is a little tricky. I got one started. I kinda cheated off camera, but you gotta, whoop, you gotta hold the control rod up and get the holes to line up. And uh, you don't want to cross thread it, but it's pretty tricky to, come on. All right, there we go. Got lucky, I got two of them in there. And now let's see if we can get that top one in there. Oh, no way. This is my lucky day. I just hand threaded all of those in there first shot. Um, sometimes that's pretty tricky. then back each one out individually and apply the Loctite and just put it back in. And that keeps the holes lined up since they're all torqued down. Since they're all torqued down. So I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on this bolt. See, and since it's already torqued down on the other ones, that one just easily goes back in. And then of course, I'm going to get my torque wrench and put the right amount of torque on there. I'm just getting the Loctite applied right now. So I've been looking at investing in one of those dry ice blasters. Because um, I've seen some cars where, see this dirt and stuff on here? You know, that, that's you know almost impossible to get all that off of a car unless you have a tool like that. Um, it doesn't really do anything for the performance or quality of the car. It just makes it look so nice. And uh, but like the cheapest one you can get is ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I talked to one of the reps the other day. The ideal one is like forty grand. And uh, so maybe I'll get one of those one day. But uh, I would much rather do what I'm doing and actually address all the old mechanical things on the car. Than, rather than just dry ice blast a car and throw it on, on auction sites. That's kind of lame if you ask me. This right here is ensuring that the, the car is put back to factory spec how it's supposed to operate. And that's, I mean, that's what you're going for. You know, the only people that are going to see the bottom of your car are me and you. But uh, it would be cool to, like, get some of that dirt off there. See, I can rub it off, but uh, maybe one of those dry ice blasters is in the future. All right, so let me get the wrench over here and torque those down. And guys, I've been doing this long enough where I know what it feels like. After you've been doing this for a while, you don't need to use the damn torque wrench and every, every single bolt because you know what 30 foot pounds or 50 newton meters or you know what it feels like all right there we go so that is in there brand new control rod bushing and now let's go back up here and look at our lower control arm aha uh -huh. now it's looking a little better it's supposed to be in the dead center and we are since i tightened it in we're a little farther back so i'm going to extend that back out but first, I want to go ahead and torque this bolt down a little bit uh, so it holds this control arm in place. Anyway, so let me go ahead and do that. I actually forgot to show the, I put a new bushing on the top and the bottom of the, uh, 
control rod, the end of the control rod, and I also did an adjustment up here to the control rod to extend it out so I could get that bolt down there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten the nut here to 19 millimeter. That is in place with new bushings and you see this little tab on the new bushing? That little tab shows you how to orient the bushing and then with that tab running down the control rod on the top and the bottom because there's a little notch in the bushing that allows it to fit over the control rod as it goes in and this bolt goes through it. Again, there's little tabs on the top and on the bottom and they're in line with the control rod. So now it's time to put the uh, spindle and ball joint on. I'm not here for many hours today, but uh, put the ball joint in there. And hope you guys can see that. Let's put the nut on the top there. And there we go. See when you have a new ball joint? See how stiff those things are? Remember how loose the other one is? So you can move it and it holds the spindle in place. Um, anyway, um, so we got a lot done tonight. Got everything cleaned up. Got new bushings pushed in here. New bushing there. New ball joint here. And our new control rod bushing here. And uh, this is coming together nicely. Next thing I'll tackle is uh, that upper control arm. And uh, I guess I can go ahead and put back on the spring perch. So I'll go ahead and throw this guy back on there. All right, and the spring perch just goes right up here with these three, uh, three bolts. And these are side specific. I uh, always get them mixed up, but uh, the way they sit uh, angles the spring a certain way and again Mercedes wants Loctite on these guys because it's on there when you take them out so I'll just go ahead and get them started and then get one started and then put some Loctite on the other ones you need to make sure you tighten down the uh, control rod front bushing before you put these in because once this is on you can't access that anymore I'm about out of Loctite. All right. All right, and then I'm going to finish it off by hand. Sure, it's torqued down correctly. And there we go. So we got the spring perch up there now. Got it all painted and clean. Oops, I missed a little spot there. Whatever. And notice there's a drain hole right there. So the spring coil, bottom coil, sits around right here. And then if any water falls in here, it goes out that drain hole there. To uh, put the back in so I can get it aligned. There we go. So you guys can see what I'm doing up here. There we go. Just getting a little bolt into that hole there. Well, shoot. <laughs> I tried to do it one handed, I dropped the washer. So let me put that bolt in there and then start recording again. Tonight, I just went ahead and didn't attach the shock at the top, but I got it attached here. All right, guys, I'm back at it. It's the next day, and right now I'm removing the uh, upper control arms. There's a bolt right there, and you can see I have a 19 millimeter wrench right back here. This is on the nut on the back. All right, I 
I've got a longer extension. I'm going to try to get in here with that without breaking any vacuum lines or fuel lines. There we go. Like I said, I've already broke it loose with a 3 8 drive. Um, Not much room to work with in there. You can actually see I've put the spring back in there. I still have the spring compressor on there. I just wanted it off the uh, shop floor. And there we go. There is the sway bar uh, nut that's held to the front of the uh, the upper control arm. All right, so it's important to note how the bushings, I mean how the uh, washers, so you have two washers and see it's concave on that side, um, right there the bushing sits into that. Then you have another washer that sits down into that washer. See how that works? So I'm just going to stick this bolt over here to the side. And you can pry this this bushing out of here. There it goes. And that'll relieve the there you go. So that's the bushing. And there's your sway bar right there. See, now the control arm can come loose from the front sway bar. Oh yeah. There we go. Once the pressure is off it uh, from that sway bar, you can tap it loose. And now there's a brake line back behind it. Let me show you guys this. So back behind here, let me get this adjusted. There you go. There's the bolt right there. See how this brake line is is right in the way of the bolt. So you'll have to slightly bend the brake line out of the way. Um, to pull that bolt all the way out. It looks like from the factory they installed the suspension first and put that bolt through and then they installed all the brake system. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to bend that brake line just a little. There we go. Just a little. You don't need to actually put a kink in it. Just kind of flex it out of the way. And there's the lower control arm bolt. So that lower control arm is now loose. There we go. So we have that control arm now. Keep in mind it's loose right now. Um, so we can pry it off the end of the sway bar. There we go. And lift it up over it. There we go. Then I can just pull it straight out of there. And here is why I was replacing this. Here is why I'm replacing this. You see the, the bushing, see the cracking where the bushing has started to deteriorate. Um, there you go, you can see it more, more over on this side. It's a family of spiders that were living in there. Um, so this was actually, I'm sure this still had a 20, 30,000 miles left on it, no problem. And this isn't uh the ball joint is not terrible and the boot's not ripped. Um, but I'm really just going the extra mile on this car because it's a, a low mileage uh, coupe. It's a low mileage coupe and I just want it to be, uh, you know, perfect. So let's grab this other replacement control arm here. And I've just got it kind of setting in place with the with bushing over here. And uh, now I'm going to lower the car down and get the bolt through the inner fender to hold it in there. And then I'll screw in, uh, put the bushing on this side and screw the bolt in to hold it to the sway bar. So let me go. Okay, so right there you can see uh, the hole for the upper control arm. But you can see it's, it's not quite lined up. And I always use one of these uh, <coughs> picks to, I'll stick it in there and get the hole 
get everything lined up correctly. All right, that was a royal pain in the butt. Um, got the bolt back through there. Now I'm gonna get the uh, lower control arm connected to the knuckle here, steering knuckle, and then uh, I'll put some, uh, <clears throat> release the spring, and once there's some load onto here, then, then go ahead and uh, tighten that down. Okay, once the bushing is in there, use some blue Loctite, and remember the orientation of those two washers. See how they're lined up? You can tell because the underside has a clean uh, like wear mark on it where it was on the bushing. But you want to put some blue Loctite and screw that back in there. And once you start to tighten that down, it's going to pull everything together. So we're just going to put it in there loose right now. All right, this is really where a lift, see the car's on the lift, and this is really where a lift comes in handy. Um, to get the steering knuckle reattached to the upper control arm, you have to close the gap, meaning you have to compress the spring. Now you can see the spring just has the back coil, it's lined up, and I've got a jack stand right there. So I'm just gonna lower the car onto the jack stand until things start to come together. All right, so I'm just gonna lower the car. And you gotta be careful, because sometimes this jack stand will go, it'll slip off. But you can see, it's compressing the spring, and the steering knuckle is getting closer to the upper control arm. So you just wanna get it lined up, and we're gonna just continue to lower it until they meet each other right there. See that, that it was uh, already moving around a little bit on us. So we're so close. Let's get these two lined up right here. And I just need to go a little bit more. There we go. So the spring is compressed. It's in the correct location, and now I can put the nut on the end of the uh, upper ball joint. Come on. All right. There we go. See the spring pocket has a stop right there, and that spring needs to come all the way up, and there's a little drain hole right in front of it, so that's perfectly aligned in there. Look at all that dust. I just cleaned all this up and the dust from that damn spring got all over my... Okay, so now we got that attached and I'm going to get a 17 millimeter. So that's enough. Now, when I raise the car Oh, I also want to tighten this guy in here. And I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, electric driver to do that. But we're going to tighten in the bushing to sway bar to upper control arm mount there. All right. Also, what I didn't point out before, I, I made sure my shock was aligned uh, with the inner fender hole. Uh, so as I lowered or compressed all this together, uh, it went up through the correct hole. Sorry guys, in that last video when I put this back together, I actually put the old bushing back in there. And there's the uh, the new bushing that came with the upper control arm. One goes on each side, uh, so I, I took this off so I could put the correct new bushing back in there. So we're just going to screw this back together now. And here's the best way to get that new bushing seated. Just take a rubber mallet. You can hammer it in there and that'll give you enough room to start the bolt and then the bolt to pull it in the rest of the way. Beautiful and we have nice new bushings in here. 
Now, this is just the method I use. You're probably asking, um, why didn't I tighten the uh, ball joint, lower ball joint uh, nut, before I attached the upper ball joint? That way I could actually, that way I could actually pull the knuckle out of the way and get a impact back there. Well, when this ball joint is not pressed up into the tapered fit, and it's not under tension when this is disconnected, if you try to tighten that nut, it's just gonna spin the ball joint. So what you can do, once you get it all assembled, then take it off the jack, and the suspension uh, will, will uh, the spring will press down on the control arm, and uh, you know it puts everything under tension, and it pushes the ball joint actually farther up in, so you can see there's See, there's a couple of threads showing now. And then you can get a wrench on there and tighten it, and the ball joint will not spin. See, it's not spinning. If you look at the top of the ball joint, see, it's not spinning with the nut. Uh, that's just the way I do it. There's probably other ways to do it. Um, anyway, you got to get this tightened down um, to the correct torque. And after you've been doing it long enough, you know what that feels like with a wrench. So I'm going to finish torquing this down, and then we'll go get this spring compressor out of there. Okay, guys, now to the worst part of uh, front suspension. I literally hate this part. These spring compressors can be a total pain in the ass. But we have to uh, decompress this uh, spring and then pull it out of the hole that is barely big enough. It's almost like the exact size of the spring compressor. And it never goes in there perfectly straight. See, <laughs> my socket is a little to the left. It's not in the dead center of the hole, so you'll have to finagle the spring compressor up through the hole. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Let me show you guys. See that spring compressor wants to come up through the hole and it's like to the left of the hole. And it's under tension down there. So I have to like sometimes get down there with a pry bar, pry it a little over to the right, reattach this, start loosening it again, and eventually it'll you'll get it to pop through the hole. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, I just put a little pressure on the wrench. And, uh, but look how tight of a fit Mercedes made that. <laughs> it's like the exact size of the hole. Uh, on the 126s, they make the hole a lot bigger and it's way easier. But on the 123s, I think that's a design flaw because it is a nightmare to get that up through this hole. Anyway, it's, uh, it's lined up with the hole now, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out of there. down here and see how we're doing okay there's the compressor there's the shaft that we are taking out of the hole almost there there you go I think we're probably good by that point now it's a matter of, uh, see how the spring has a slight arc to it? And that's going down through the center. So you have to get it twisted and turned until the little uh, tabs here line up with the exit holes. And uh, this is this is a really, really fun part, let me tell you. All right, you'll notice I have the suspension back on um, the jack stand. And that is so I could put uh, some compression on it and screw my nut back onto the top of the shock. So, we're done with the suspension components on the driver's side of the car. Let's, let's take a look at all the new components and see what it looks like. We still need to put on the dust shield and the hub and rotor, which is over there on the bench. But as far as the suspension goes, we are done with the driver's side. And I went ahead and cleaned up uh, all that dust under here um, from the shock that, that got all everything. So that's cleaned up. 
So we got our new ball joint. Uh, the sh new shock, Bill Seen shock. Our new upper control arm. Our new sway bar bushings. Our new front control rod bushing. And our new rear control arm, uh, control rod bushing. So, oh, and the biggest thing is the new lower control arm inner bushings. Those have also been replaced. So this is a completely rebuilt new front end suspension. Now it's over. got that guy on there. Now, let me go get the rotor and hub. Right, guys, what I'm up to now is replacing the rear seal. Um, let me back this up a little bit. Basically, you want to hammer in the edges of the seal so you can then pop it out and then uh, re-grease the bearing and put in a new, put in a new seal. chisel just tapping out this old seal you get it loose then you can use a seal puller like this to, to go in there and catch the edge of it and pull it out well you guys uh, missed the fun part but you put the seal puller in there and then you can pull the seal out when you uh, once you tap all the edges in. But uh, you missed the fun part of me cranking on it, trying to get it to come out. There you go. There's the old seal. So that's not going to be used anymore. That seal pulled out. Let's see if you guys can see that. Then you have access to your bearing. And so here we have the old bearings. We're going to put in some new ones, but you can see um, there's the bearing race where all the grease uh, goes and where the bearing rides on. And you can actually tap out these races and uh, put in a new bearing race. Let me just see what these look like, because with 56,000 miles, that's, yeah, that's totally unnecessary. Um, these races don't have a mark on them. And uh, pop some new bearings in there, and then uh, we'll reseal that. Um, but first, I want to take this guy to the parts washer and clean out all this old, nasty grease. All right, so we have cleaned up the hub, got our new bearings, new uh, rear uh, uh, inner bearing seal. Um, these are also black from the factory, so I went ahead and refinished that, repainted it black so it looks nice. And let's look at the, the back side of that hub. Sorry, the hubs were painted black from the factory. And we can see uh, there's a little grease I left down in there. But uh, look how clean it is down in there. Got all that old grease out of there. Looks really good. Look at those races are in outstanding condition. So let's go ahead and... Uh, We're gonna now we have to pack uh, our bearings with grease, and the way this works is the uh, once it's packed with grease, the rear bearing just sits down in there like that, and then the seal goes right in, right there. Let's go see how that bearing that seal fits around the hub. Let me take the camera. I'm sorry, not the hub, the spindle. All these, I always mix up the terminology. So here's the spindle. And so, I'm sorry, there we go. So that goes, 
see how it stretches so if you look closely there's a little bitty spring right there that runs all the way around hey Thomas how are you Thomas just came in to say hello there's a a spring that goes all the way around that seal and when you push it on that spring expands see it expand and it goes around um, the hub and it rides I'm sorry around the spindle and it rides on that uh, and it keeps uh, it rides on the spindle there and it keeps all the dirt and dust out of the back so it's a real tight fit so anyway let's get these uh, those bearings packed and get these new seals uh, pressed in all right let's go ahead and pack our bearings it all to pack it you want to just turn it and push it into the grease there we go See how that grease is down in there and it's squirted out between all the wheels and it's all packed down there in the back? That's how you want it. And then I just like to wipe a little around the race. And Mercedes likes you to pack some down there. Not pack, but goop some up down there in the middle. All right, I'll just drop that bearing in there. And then get these nasty ass gloves off of here. And then, so you can see, we now have a packed bearing. And now it is ready for that seal to go over the top. And I have a socket that actually lines up perfectly with the edges of the seal so I just tap it down in there alright once we get our socket perfectly lined up there I'm going to smack it alright let's go over and smack it another time just want to make sure it's all lined up and there we go Beautiful. We now have a beautiful seal that is pressed in and everything is beautifully lubricated. Now, before you put this on, you want to lubricate the piece that rides on the spindle right here so it's not, you know, um, on a dry spindle. Get a little grease right on there. So it starts off and is able to slip until it uh, kind of runs in and, and, and gets, gets running smooth and formed to the spindle. There we go. So there we go. That's packed. Now the other one, <coughs> you actually don't have a seal for the uh, outer bearing. That just, uh, that just is held in by the um, retaining bolt that holds the, the hub onto the spindle. But anyway, that's how you put the back one in. And so this is a nice cleaned up. You can see there's grease down in there. Paint's still a little wet where I refinished the hub. And this is ready to go back on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, other side and then get these on the car. All right, I just packed the outer bearing there and now I'm working on the other side. Just packing this inner bearing, drop in our outer wheel bearing, and bam, there we go guys. Those are completely cleaned up, hubs are repainted, uh, wheel bearings, new wheel bearings, and they've been packed, fresh grease, and new seals on the back. Um, the rotors, actually, they're, they're like brand new. I mean, no re I actually bought another set of rotors, but these rotors look like they've been used to maybe couple of thousand miles there's uh, there's no lip on the rotors they're super thick 
there's no scoring or lines in the rotors. They're basically brand new. Um, I just like to put everything back the way I got it. So I wrote passenger here and driver side there. And uh, those rotors are absolutely fine, so I'm leaving those alone. Anyway, wheel bearings uh, are done. And again, that's the little uh, nut that you hand tighten. It doesn't actually use a wrench. Um, because Mercedes only wants you to hand tighten these. You just want to get the play out. And I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so I haven't gone all the way down. See the play? You just want to tighten it enough. To get the play out. See we've still got some play there. Okay, now the play is gone. I'm gonna back it off. Alright, you can hear. A little bit of play. A little bit of play. There we go. Perfect. And that's how tight you want these to be. Um, if you crank them down, there's too much friction builds up. So I got to tighten this lock nut now, but what this is, this is a little copper uh, interference pin and it plugs right into the end of the spindle. Yeah, that's our set screw, our, our lock screw. It just keeps that hub, that nut from spinning. All right, there we go. So the hub is back on. Now let's put our grease cover on. And Mercedes actually says in the service manual to pack a little grease right there in the uh, grease cover. So pack a little grease down in there. And we're going to put that back on here. And you can usually get this on with a rubber mallet. There we go. There. Now hit this with some brake cleaner. And then we need to reattach the brake. That's what I'm doing right there. Now the brake pads in this thing were brand new and it looks like the rotors are brand new too. So no need to change that. Now I think that's a 19 millimeter. But We'll just get it started with this. Okay, and those definitely you want to put in with a, uh, a torque wrench. All right, guys, so what I'm working on now um, is replacing the tie rod ball joints. And the actual uh, tie rod um, ball joint shaft that Mercedes used, it's very high quality. It's very good steel. So I really like to clean these up uh, in the parts washer and then repaint them and then just order replacement ball joints. Here's the replacement ball joint right here. And so I'm going to clean this up, paint it, uh, reuse the shaft because that's just a, a piece of tube steel that's threaded. It's in it's good quality. It's not the cheap stuff they make today. So I'll repaint that, clean it up, and then I'll stick the new ball joint uh, in the end of it, and it'll be good as new. All right, guys, I've just cleaned these up in the uh, parts washer and hit it with uh, some black paint. They were black from the factory. Some of these were green from the factory I've seen, but these were black, so that paint's still dry. And before I put the tie rod ends in, I always like to hit it with a little bit of anti-seize. Uh, that makes it where, you know, 10 years from now or whenever these are changed again or 30 years, whatever, uh, they come out of here easy. There's a lock nut that goes there. And then one of the nuts actually screws onto the tie rod. Alright, there we go. Look how nice those look. 
All right, guys, so I just finished the driver's side of the uh, front end rebuild, and uh, I'm going to show you the passenger side, which I'm starting on next. So, passenger side, pretty nasty looking. Bunch of old stuff in here. Let's go look at what we just did on the driver's side. Bam. Look at that. Got the factory markings still on the springs. Everything's new, nice and shiny. Really proud of this. New bushings. Looks really great under here. And then here's the uh, all the front end bits that go on, the linkages. Here's a, the new shock, the new uh, Mercedes center link, the original Mercedes tie rods with limb forward or ball joints pressed in, or, or I'm sorry, screwed in. So that's all going to go on um, as soon as I'm done with the passenger side. So I'm not going to record the passenger side because you guys saw the entire process on the driver's side. I will just show uh, the video when everything is complete. So let me get started on that. Alright guys, so we got the new uh, lower control arm with the brand new bushings in there. The new control rod bushing, rear control rod bushings in the front. Uh, put a new ball joint on there. Put a new upper control arm with new control arm bushings with new sway bar bushing. Of course, uh, there's the upper control arm. And uh, so now I'm just going to uh, put the hub with the new greased bearings and caliper on here. I mean uh, rotor and caliper on here. All right, guys, we are done with the suspension. All new, brand new components under here. Looks absolutely beautiful. Now it's time to head over to the alignment shop.